we have come really far in the evolution tree as a species. While gaining many abilities, we have also lost some of the important things that kept our ancestors alive for millions of years. Millions of modern humans look in the mirror and ask the same question. Why am I so hairy? We spend a lot of money getting rid of our body hair. But from a scientist's point of view, we are asking the wrong question. To them, the question they ask is why are we so hairless? Without this far, many of our ancestors wouldn't have been able to survive the extremely cold winters and evolutionary theorists have put forth numerous hypotheses for why humans became so naked and hairless. One theory is the parasite theory. The thick fur did keep our ancestors nice and warm for millions of years but fur also attracts different types of parasites such as lice, flies, ticks and other types of parasites that can be harmful and deadly. But this theory is contradicted by many historians which use the argument of Homo erectus and previous species to have had an incredibly strong immune system that does not mean an impenetrable immune system. Another theory for why our ancestors lost their fur was proposed by Darwin. Darwin suggested it was due to sexual selection and that our ancestors preferred less hairy mates. But the majority of researchers today believe that reduced body hair had to do with thermal regulation, specifically with keeping cool. This theory being the simplest theory is also known as the heat theory. Due to the high temperatures in the African continent, by losing our fur, the human body was able to sweat a lot more allowing our body to cool down a lot quicker. In other words, while exposed to sunnier conditions, those characterized by less fur and more sweat glands were better at sweating and were more likely to survive and reproduce. Another theory is the aquatic ape theory. This theory is based on our ancestors living a semi-aquatic lifestyle and is the least plausible in the eyes of the experts. This theory was explained by highlighting the fact that hair is an absolute terrible insulator in water and food was difficult to find and most of it was found in shallow water. To make finding food easier, the biological evolution through different generations took place, slowly but surely removing our ancestors' hair. One more theory on why our ancestors lost their fur is that they did so for a better and more connected communication. We can tell a lot from slight changes in skin color. So from these non-verbal communications, we can gain insights into another person's mood, health and emotions. Unlike many mammals, we have not just two but three types of cone cells in our eyes. Cone cells are involved in color vision and having three allows us to detect more subtle color changes. Interestingly, primates with bare faces and bare rums also tend to have three cones. But with all these reasons listed, it's unlikely that genetic research will help us directly figure out whether humans are swimming apes, sweaty monkeys or blushing primates. Besides all these theories though, the truth is we are still as hairy as before. The only difference is that our apparent nakedness is a result of a shift from fur to hair, hair diminished in size to the brink of invisibility. This was proved by one study where scientists analyzed skin biopsies from cadavers under a microscope and the team counted hair follicles in five body regions including forehead, back, chest, forearm and thigh of seven humans, four chimpanzees and eight reduced macaque monkeys. Although the sample size was small, the results showed that chimps and humans have about the same density of hair follicles. However, what sprouts from those follicles differs. Over most body regions, chimps have thick fur, whereas humans have fine vellus hair or peach fuzz hair. Some are so small that they can only be seen with the mic. Exactly why and when all this happened is still a mystery to us. 
Reasons and hypotheses have been put forward, but these are not the only possibilities, and perhaps the loss of hair is due to a combination of factors. Combining the new study's molecular evidence of how hair grows with physical traits observed in humans will get us closer to the truth or at least closer to a fuller, shinier head of hair. As researchers elucidate the genetic underpinning of fur loss, they will be able to estimate when those DNA changes occurred, narrowing down which hominin species hair loss occurred in and what selective pressures were involved in this evolutionary milestone. And that brings us to the end of the video. Hope you liked it. Tell me what are your thoughts on loss of fur in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. For more videos on human evolution, check our channel out and please do not forget to support us by liking our videos and subscribing to the channel. Till then, this is Halabella and see you soon in our next video.